Hey there, Angular folks, it's Brian, back again with yet another Angular tutorial. Have you ever wondered if you can add jump links in Angular? In plain HTML, you just use an anchor and an ID, but in Angular, that doesn't really work. In this tutorial, I'll show you the right way to build smooth, router-friendly jump links. And by the end, your pages will jump and scroll better than ever. All right, let's dive in. Here is the app that we'll be working with in this tutorial. Right now, we've got this table of contents at the top of the page. Each item looks like a link, but if I click, nothing happens. That's because these links don't actually point anywhere yet. We have all of these corresponding sections in the page, and the links should take us to each of these. In a standard website, this is really easy with anchors and IDs, but this is an Angular app, so things are a little different. In Angular, you don't just slap an href in there. So let's do it the Angular way. Let's look at the code for this component to better understand what we're starting with. Okay, here we have this list of links that form the table of contents region that we see at the top of the page. Right now, each link is just an empty anchor tag, which is why they don't navigate anywhere. Then, when we scroll down further into the content, we can see that the headers for these sections already have IDs, and these are what we need to link to. Now, in a normal website, we'd just add an href with the ID for the corresponding section, and we'd be done. But we can't do that here. Instead, we need to use the router link directive. In order to use this directive, we need to import it in our component imports array. Okay, now let's switch back to the HTML. On this first link here, I'll add the router link directive. Since we're just adding a jump link, I don't want to switch the route. If I were navigating to a different route, I'd just add the route here. But in this case, we don't want to change routes, so let's just leave this empty for now. Okay, now in order to navigate to the header by ID, we use the fragment input then we just pass it the associated ID, in this case, links. Okay, this should work now, right? Well, let's save and see. Okay, let's click the link. Whoops, it's actually not working, huh? Well, this is because with the way we have it set up, we're actually switching the route. If we go back to the home page, here we can see that home is the current route. Then when we click the link, we are removing the home portion of the path, but we are successfully setting the anchor ID, so that's good. So how can we fix this? Well, it turns out there's a simple trick we can apply. All we need to do is bind the router link to an empty array. Yeah, it looks weird, but this is Angular's way of saying don't go anywhere, just stick to the current route. Now let's do the same for the rest of these links too. All right, let's save and go back to the browser now. Okay, now when we click the links, we're not switching routes anymore, but we're still not navigating to the proper section either. We are properly adding the appropriate fragments in the URL, so what the heck is happening now? Well, it turns out that in an Angular app, we actually need to enable what's known as anchor scrolling. In order to do this, you'll need to open the file that contains the configuration for your routes. In our case, this is our main TypeScript file. Here, within the provide router function, we'll add one more function with in-memory scrolling. This does exactly what it sounds like. It lets the router remember and scroll to fragment anchors. We need to pass this function some options. In our case, we're going to add the anchor scrolling option and set it to enabled. This tells Angular if there's a fragment in the URL, scroll to it. Okay, that should be it. Let's save and try again now. Nice. When we click the links, we're properly navigating to the appropriate section. And when we hit the back button, it even takes us back through the fragments like they were real pages. 
This is why you want Angular managing the history instead of doing raw HTML anchors. And believe it or not, we can improve this even more. Let's make one last improvement. Right now, the jump between sections is instant. It works, but it's jarring. Let's smooth it out. We can do this with a single line of CSS. In this app, the vertical scrolling occurs on the HTML element. So let's open the global styles for this app. On the HTML, we just need to add the scroll behavior property, and then we'll set it to a value of smooth. That's it. So let's save this and then head back to the browser. Okay, let's try it out. Much better, right? It's one line, but it really improves the feel of the app. So that's it. We just turned lifeless links into full-fledged Angular router links that jump, scroll, and play nice with the back button. In this example, we covered how to use the router link directive to add jump links. We enabled in-memory scrolling options in the router config to allow scrolling to anchors. And to top it all off, we added a smooth scrolling effect with a single line of CSS. These are the little details that make your Angular app feel pro-level. If you enjoyed this and want more Angular tips that make your apps feel professional, hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what other little annoyances you'd like me to tackle. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you in the next one.